how best to spend those long, long hours of isolation at home? Well, how about the puzzling pastime that Moraka has been pursuing? Last year, when I purchased this thousand-piece jigsaw puzzle of a 1933 Diego Rivera mural, I didn't expect to get to it until I was, I don't know, 80? Well, things have changed. I'm not the only one. All across the country, people are pulling out their puzzles to pass the time. In fact, the very first jigsaw puzzle is said to have been made by a London map maker in the 1760s. His name was John Spilsbury. Ann Williams is a jigsaw puzzle historian. He pasted a map onto a thin piece of wood, and he used a scroll saw to cut it up. England would be one piece, Germany would be another piece. He marketed these to the very affluent and influential people as a tool to teach their children geography. And Anne, I gotta say, a jigsaw puzzle is a great way to learn geography. Oh, absolutely. I think just about everybody spent some time in their childhood putting a map of the United States together. Soon, puzzles expanded their reach beyond learning. So nursery rhyme, fairy tale subjects, ships and trains. Early in the 20th century, gaming company Parker Brothers came up with the idea of interlocking pieces, each one cut by hand, mostly, says Williams, by women. Parker Brothers claimed that it hired women because they already knew how to sew. A treadle sewing machine looked very much like a treadle scroll saw, so they were easy to train and they didn't mention that they could pay the women a lot less. It was during the Great Depression that the popularity of jigsaw puzzles exploded. It used to be crossword puzzles and backgammon and mahjong. Now it's jigsaw, and it's got the whole country steamed up. 30 million households in the United States were absorbing 10 million jigsaw puzzles every week. Puzzles were entertainment and employment. There were so many people out of work. You could buy a scroll saw, a jigsaw, for $20. They set up the saw in their kitchen or their basement, started making jigsaw puzzles and selling them to their neighbors or renting them out through the local drugstore. Rose and Mark Stevens of Peacetime Puzzles in Northwood, New Hampshire, have been making and selling puzzles for 25 years. We go through spells. Sometimes frogs it's butterflies. Frogs were in for several years. Yeah, you couldn't frog. get enough puzzles of frogs. frogs. Really? Lighthouses were, people collect lighthouses. You know. yeah. That was a big, big thing for a couple of years. What are some of the recent crazes? Dogs. Recent birds. Owls. Winter owls are very, yeah. yeah, owls. But the bulk of their business comes from personalized puzzles. You upload your picture of your dog uh, to the website. Rose gets it, blows it up, prints it out on the large format printers. And I mount it on cardboard and die cut it, package it, and then ship it. They've been privy to moments both poignant and puzzling. We had a wedding picture and they wanted a person taken out of the picture. I thought that was cute. <laughs> I, I didn't ask the story. I, I wanted to make up my own story on that one. <laughs> and did you do it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can be pretty creative. It sounds like, I mean, I'm not being cute here. It sounds like you guys are kind of an essential business. It is for us. <laughs> you, ask, you ask a puzzler that runs out of puzzles and they'll tell you it's... Oh, people it, get, they it, get concerned. You yeah. know, they only have three puzzles left. Yeah, we get they, that all the time. They, yeah. they come in and they, they look all distraught. And, What's the matter? I'm almost out of puzzles. As for me, I'm not out of puzzles. I've still got a long way to go with this one. Hey. At least I got the edges done. Uh, get in there!